Hey, Thomas from Field Tennis. Today's topic are going to be forehand top spin drills. So we're going to work on accelerating the arm, the forearm, the wrist, and learning how to apply more top spin on the ball through various drills on the forehand side. Maybe one word of warning. I suggest that you do this only if you have a good clean shot that is quite flat first. So if you're already starting with a lot of spin and you're doing all sorts of funny movements with your wrist, windshield, wiper nonsense and something like that, then maybe this will not work well for you because uh, you're not hitting well through the ball. So in my opinion, in my view, we need to learn to hit a flatter shot first to get a good clean contact with the ball that we can see that the ball flies off effortlessly off our racket and when we have that clean shot then on top of that we can upgrade it when necessary to a more spinny shot and that spin shot is then going to have pace and, and top spin. If you can't hit the ball very clean and you're just doing top spin drills then you will spin the ball but the ball will be without pace and it's going to land short. And another thing to keep in mind when you're working on these top spin drills is that you need to do the fundamentals well. So I will not keep repeating them while we're doing the drills, but I will just point them out now. So whenever you're hitting a forehand, you should have good balance. You don't have to be always in a neutral stance. You can be in open stance, but you must, you must feel good stability under your feet. You must have good, good posture, so not leaning backwards which is very common when it comes to top spins players lean backward a lot and players lose balance oftentimes either this way or this way so you must try to feel stable rotate well whatever position you are in that you have rotation that you're not doing top spin like this and your body is not doing anything so whether it's open stance or neutral stance that you have stability and body rotation and maybe another thing to mention is the non-dominant arm so that your domi non-dominant arm is not dropping down like this or in some other way that it's not coordinated with the hitting arm. I've made a video some time ago on the role of the non-dominant arm and how to work on it with various drills. So you can click the card above and explore that topic if you need to. And another thing to keep in mind is that for top spin to function well you have to have some wrist leg so if you tighten up too early when you're doing the backswing and now you tighten up too early and strong you're going to be spinning the ball like this without any wrist leg and wrist slap and again those top spins are going to have no pace and they're going to land short so something to keep in mind that you always want to feel some relaxation behind you that you get some loop and wrist leg and then from here you are then accelerating into topspin. So why do we actually need the ability to spin the ball more sometimes and sometimes less? There's a difference between pro level and recreational or normal non-trained people level of tennis. The professionals train tennis since maybe seven years old and once they seriously start training they're basically training every day and doing various acceleration exercises for topspin which you will also see today and they develop the ability to hit the ball in the sweet spot of the racket even though the ball is coming very fast like this and they're swinging very fast upwards or like a bit more across the ball but the point is that the, the path of the ball and the path of the racket are quite different and so it's it's difficult to hit the ball in the sweet spot with such a fast upward movement. So whenever we, we miss the sweet spot, we miss hit a little bit, the ball will get less power because the racket string bed acts like a trampoline. So we have to hit somewhere in the sweet spot which is about this big and as soon as we go out of the sweet spot, the ball is going to go short and someone can attack us. So on our level, recreational level, even up to 5, 5, 0, 5, 5, you still cannot 
accelerate as fast as the pro you can learn but you will not hit sweet spot consistently so we are not really looking to apply that much topspin when rallying from the baseline we just apply good amount of topspin to have ball control and to have good reliable trajectory but we need topspin in other situations when the ball is easier so when the ball slows down in various situations then it's easier to hit the sweet spot the calculation for the brain is easier and that's when we will use more topspin and so that can be the situation when the ball is defensive and we can step inside the court and from here now we need a short cross court shot that's going to open up the court and we need more topspin to make the ball dip so from this position we're going to apply a lot of topspin so that the ball is going to dip and for example if we have a ball somewhere here and we are approaching the net and the ball is a bit lower then we also need more topspin and not so much power in order to control that shot so these are various situations where we need the ability to spin the ball more but in almost all cases we're going to use this ability only when the ball is easier so when the ball is slower and it's not coming very fast at us our technical objective when we are working on forehand stop spin drills is to learn the multi-segmented forehand so multi-segments means that we can hit the forehand with multiple segments in the arm so that means that we can use the elbow joint and the wrist joint to have three segments so this is one two and three when we don't have a multi-segmented forehand that means it's being hit with a straight arm or like with one movement so this is not a multi-segmented forehand and while it's possible to apply topspin to this ball so I'm trying to apply topspin I cannot really accelerate the racket head much because I am only using this joint and this whole arm cannot move very fast through space it's a very long lever it's very hard to accelerate uh, the whole arm so players who hit with a more straight arm they can release the wrist and they accelerate here so that's one way so they kind of have the straight arm but they are now using this segment so it's not only wrist the forearm is turning but there is no elbow so this is a forehand where the elbow doesn't bend so we have these two segments the arm and the wrist but there are also forehands where the elbow bends and when we have this shorter lever when we have shorter lever we can accelerate it faster so through through this ability we gain the ability to spin the ball more so the first forehand top spin drill that we're going to be doing is actually learning this multi-segmented forehand so we need to learn to break the elbow so if you can already do that that's great you can do this exercise without any problems still do it but if you if you are used to going with the straight arm a lot then this is the exercise for you to learn how to break the elbow so the exercise goes like this we just drop the ball from the hand and we're trying to spin it cross court so you can aim so I'm starting in this corner you can see and then I'm aiming towards that corner on the other side of the service box or I can even go a bit shorter so that is the drill and if players have trouble so if they do this and they are still extending even though they can hit the target like I just did right now but right now we focus on technique so if you have trouble breaking the elbow you can try putting your finger like this and you're just doing exercises or two fingers like this a bit it will give you a good sensation on, on how to break the elbow so this is the exercise the footwork I suggest you just start in a neutral stance but not very wide just stand here and make sure that you always rotate so don't don't hit like this top spin and leave your hip behind so even though we are focusing just on this just make sure that something is moving here in the hips that your heel comes a bit off 
off the ground. The second thing to keep in mind is that when you're hitting the ball, you want to hit the ball around net height, so, so don't spin the ball up here. That's a different exercise or different goal. So we don't want to throw the ball up and spin it here. What we want is that the ball is dropping down and then we have to dig it out of this drop. So it's like this. So for a more advanced drill, you can visualize that when you drop the ball, it's going to drop below the height of the net. So I'm to drop the ball below the height of the net and then I'm trying to dig the ball out with topspin. And my target area is always the service box. I want to hit the ball in the service box, sharp cross court. And my technical focus is that I feel that I'm breaking the elbow. So you can stop when you hit the shot, you can stop and take a look. If you have no coach to observe you or to correct you, you have to be your own coach. So that means you're not just focusing on the ball because again, you can do it with a straight arm like this and you say that's mission accomplished, but you are now learning how to break the elbow. So when you hit the ball, you have to take a look. Okay, my elbow is here and you have to allow the wrist to move and accelerate upward on the ball. Maybe another thing to keep in mind is that when you're spinning the ball, you have to visualize that the ball spins exactly around this axis. So players oftentimes pull across the ball like this. And then if we were to see the ball, then the ball is spinning like somehow diagonally. It's not, it's not a clean spin. So you have to picture that you're really spinning along this axis. And these shots are not very strong. It's not about power, it's about precision and very clean hitting. So again, I'm dropping the ball. You need to feel some loop here. You're breaking the elbow and practicing to hit the ball short. You can go very short like this. So the next progression from the drop hit forehand is to try and apply that in a live ball exchange. Then we're going to be hitting with my buddy Peter here short cross court mini tennis so i'm trying to hit the same forehand top spin that i did before and peter is trying to give me a nice slice ball because it's easier uh, for player to apply top spin on the ball that is slow and he sits up compared to the ball that's coming fast and has a lot of top spin so beginners intermediate players are the ones that we want to teach top spin first they need to receive a very slow ball and on that slow ball they are going to, you see the ball sits up, I can take a look at the ball. I have enough time, so like this, whoop, I can see the ball and now I can imagine top spin on the ball. So of course, as you can see, you need to work with your feet, you need to find good balance. And you see now I see the ball and now I can work on the top spin. If the coach is there, they can remind you about breaking the elbow, right? So we really don't want now very long uh, backswing, but we can focus on this and this. So sometimes, of course, you're going to miss the shot or many times. So if the coach is there, they're used to slicing like this. If there's your partner, it's a very good exercise. As you can see for ball control. So always position really well to the ball, find balance and spin the ball in a controlled way. A very similar forehand topspin development drill to one that we just did is the one where we are working on another skill that is a skill of slicing and also footwork. So I will show you what we need to do. So we need to stop the ball first. So with the backspin we stop the ball and then we're hitting topspin. So what you practice here is always good positioning to the ball, very stable position on the ground in whatever stance I end up with. So whether it's that that's open or, or neutral, let's say the ball goes like this, I'm in open stance and I'm working on that. So 
that's a very good exercise for developing skills the skill of topspin the skill of watching the ball because the you will encourage the player to watch the ball here really well because they're not hitting and turning their head they have to keep keep the ball here so they're, they're still here with their head and they spin the ball yes so now i'm watching the ball positioning and still working on my forehand topspin the one drill that is being used the most in junior competitive training all over the world is forehand acceleration into topspin and this is what juniors do almost every day maybe even just for 50 repetitions and the drill is very similar to what we did before with the self drop feed so now i'm throwing the ball to the player so peter is trying to hit the ball in the air and he's trying to let the ball go down so i'm trying to throw the ball in a way that he's going to hit the ball quite low so that the ball is around the height of the net or even lower so that he feels the need to dig the ball out yes and his target area is about the same where he stands now so just between the service line and the three-quarter line so three-quarter of the court because when you have that mental image that you have to play short it's subconsciously encouraging the right technique you're trying to make the ball deep you're picturing the curve the arc and so we always have an objective with a target that is developing the stroke subconsciously even if we don't give any instruction and at the same time Peter is now practicing this shorter version of the forehand which is a very good exercise for him because he's one of those players that have very nice long extensions with a straight arm And so this is a very good variation for him to practice. That's right. So I want to share one more tip that will help you spin the ball better and engage the wrist in the right way. And that's the, the way how we hold the racket. So whether it's a bit more Western or a bit more Eastern, right now it doesn't matter so much. What matters is that we have the index finger a bit extended away so that I hold the racket like this and not like this. So when I have the index finger under, so I feel it under the racket, then it comes very natural for me to, to turn the wrist this way and to spin the racket up so to move the, this edge when I'm accelerating. So it comes very natural and I, it, to me it feels like this. So I'm doing with my index finger I come under the ball and then I do like this and with the index finger under I have very good support of the racket so you can see I can do this with two fingers sometimes I ask players who are very used to these kinds of grips to practice like this a bit mini tennis they can drop hit and all you hold just with the thumb and index finger and you're learning to spin the ball in mini tennis so that you understand the role of the index finger when you're hitting the forehand right so in this case when we're hitting topspin the index finger helps it gives us a very good leverage when i turn the wrist like this compared to this when we don't have index finger under so again whatever grip you can have continental grip and you hold like this without index finger then the player is going to feel a lot of strain on the wrist and they're going to be turning the wrist like this and they will not have very precise very fine movements so usually players struggle with the forehand not all of them but in many cases they struggle with the forehand and precision when they don't have the fingers spread a little bit like that and so in this case can become more obvious i mentioned this to peter when he was doing and and he tried and immediately felt it oh yeah it's better with the index finger under so something to experiment with and again you can do just some forehands holding the racket like this with two fingers so that you feel the role of the index finger and how to engage your wrist for the topspin forehand.